Remember, please, that, that we will continue to observe the protocols set out by the COVID unit. Let us pray. With faith in Jesus Christ, receive the body of our brother, Ronnie McDonald, Rufus, for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism, anointed with the Holy Spirit. So therefore, with confidence, pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise into perfection in the company of the saints. Amen. Please be seated. We have now some words of remembrance by Marcia Dottin. Good afternoon, everyone. Ronnie McDonald Cleophus Dottin Doc, the last child of Cleophus and Dorothy, the late Cleophus and Dorothy Dottin, was born October 20, 1957, and died December 22, 2001, in the house where he was born 64 years, one month and two days later. He was the brother of Laurel, Ion, Pauline, Anna, Astrid, and Francis Dottin, Calvin Maloney, and Michael Gooding, uncle, great uncle, and great, great uncle of many. He never married, and as far as we know, he had no children. After his primary schooling at Christchurch Boys School, Ronnie had a short apprenticeship in plumbing before joining the staff at Goddard's Flight Kitchen in 1977 as a janitor. He remained there until his retirement three years ago as storeroom clerk. He made many friends over his 42 years there and it was there that he got the nickname Doc. To them, he was Doc. To his great nephews, Chad and Taj, he was Paro, and they were his Paros. Ronnie had a tradition where he bit all the babies of the family on the big toe. On the soft part of their big toe. His nieces, Deidre and Danielle, remember the chores that Uncle Ronnie made them do, which they hated. They said the boys, Chad and Taj, had it easy. Danielle also remembered that he used to feed her with sea moss and all the other concoctions he used to mix up. Leslie saw Uncle Ronnie as a father figure 
who always gave her sound advice and told her what he expected from her. To her, he was a free spirit and a fun person who always found time for her and her daughter, Kirk Leisha. You see me? I love myself. That was his mantra, and he lived it daily. He loved hanging out with his many friends. Sometimes his car would be home, but he would tell me I was all the way in St. Lucie. He loved all the goldies and would challenge you to identify the singer while he sang along. He found a list of what we believe to be his favorites in his wallet. He also loved cricket and, follow, and would follow the fortunes and misfortunes of West Indies cricket, and he loved his beers. When Ronnie was diagnosed with prostate cancer over 15 years ago, he made the radical decision to have the operation. He lived the next 15 years cancer-free, but an accident three years ago, which left him with an injured hip, showed that his nightmare would return. After being diagnosed with cancer again, and with the arthritis in his hip causing him to walk with a cane, he decided to retire at the age of 60 and began a 32-month long fight of his life. He was determined, he said, to beat it. He Googled everything about his disease. And one thing he found out was that daily exercise, one of his loves, was helpful. He joined the Fur House, Fur House Gym and was there daily until his doctor advised him to take it easy. He ate and he drank anything that he felt would help him beat this alien in his body. And he seemed to be beating it for 30 months. While up and about, he watched lots of television. Some days when I visited him, I would ask, what you're watching today? He would reply, I'm cooking today, watching the Food Network. I am watching these guys restore an old rusty car. His food network watching paid off when he made, made steamed fish one day from one of the recipes. Pauline still talks about that fish. We also found the recipe for stir fry shrimp in his wallet. He loved to cook. On Sundays when Pauline returned from church, he had lunch ready. Pauline returned the favor. After he was alien, alien, she only cooked what he wanted to eat. If Ronnie didn't feel like eating food that day, Pauline didn't cook that day. Our sole purpose was to make him as comfortable as possible. In September, he drove himself to the hospital for a blood transfusion. When I offered to drive him, he said it was not an operation. A month later, when the pain was more than he could bear, as he said, his whole body was hurting. We took him to the QEH, where he was administered two units of morphine and the tablets to take at home. He never complained of pain after that, and the tablets were not decreasing either. We watched as the cancer took over his body in the last two weeks of his life. It wasn't easy. <laughs> seeing our once muscular brother become a shell of himself, but still he fought. In the last week, we will prop him on a bank of pillows, and he will use his remaining strength and his gym techniques to hoist, to hoist himself, to hold on to his shorts out of the sheet as he pulled himself into a sitting position. So much so, I would ask him if he thought he was still in the gym. Believe me, his abs were better than mine. Ronnie died at home, surrounded by his family. Dad said after, it took the cancer three attempts to get him. Our family would especially like to thank Mark Critchlow who would from time to time take time from his job to drive Ronnie to do his business. Taj, who though it was virtual schooling and in the midst of exams, 
that we call upon to help. We also thank those who visited or brought him flower fruit baskets. We especially want to thank Shakira of the St. George Home for Funerals, who always replied to our ever-changing requests with no problem, and our requests were immediately granted. And we thank you here in the church and outside and virtually wherever you are for your support in giving Doc his last right. Continue to sleep in peace, brother. Say hi to Dad and Mummy, David and Richard. Eternal rest grant unto him, O oh God. Thank you. Him now, 497, Blessed Assurance, Jesus. and prayer. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Ronnie McDonald Theopas. Prepare heaven, open to him the gates of larger life. You receive him more and more into your joyful service. The all have served in the past. He may share your eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. You be seated for the first Bible reading. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Revelation to John, chapter 21, verses 2 to 7. 
I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of the Lord. Congregation may be seated as the choir will lead us. They stand for the Quran version of Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd.
Second scripture lesson. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. We now stand as we sing to him, Amazing Grace, so sweet the sound. I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let me first of all, on behalf of the parish family here at Christchurch Parish Church, offer to you our deepest condolences as you mourn the loss of someone that was reflected upon in the words of remembrance very near and dear to you as a large family and that you will come together as a family to support one another as we share in your loss, even though we're not directly related, we know, of course, that many of us have gone through similar situations and circumstances. And we therefore only express our condolences for those persons who are here 
um, but of course those persons who are watching online. And I also want to offer condolences, if I may, on behalf of Archdeacon Eric Lynch, who is here with us this afternoon. He's on vacation, but he decided to come out here to share with you, to offer his prayerful and his presence. Now, I had, a, of course, a brief meeting with the sisters of our dearly departed brother. And, of course, when we've discussed the hymns and the readings and the order of service, I often would ask, especially if I do not know the individual, what would you say about your brother? And they indicated that he had a favorite saying. He said, you see me, I love myself. Now, apparently there was another word in there. I am not going to share that particular word, but you know that word already. <laughs> but that was the man. But the point is I want to commend to you these words. You see me, I love myself. You see me, I love myself. Now, you may find that a bit odd to emphasize that I love myself when it seems as though the heart of the Christian message is one of sacrifice that we are giving up ourselves seen for someone or something greater. That, of course, is the heart of the Christian message. You may say it's strange that it seems as though I'm saying I love myself in a world where it seems that selfishness and egotism is creating great havoc, not only in the world in general, but also in our personal relationships. If a person solely loves themselves, then I do believe that that relationship is not going to flourish. So therefore, how can I say and commend to you the words, you see me, I love myself. Well, the point is, is that it seems to come across as that as the Christian part of the message, it means that we should be selfless, not consider self. But that is not really the Christian message. In fact, it's not the Christian message from the point of view when Jesus asks persons, what is the greatest commandment? He says, for us to understand about love of self, we're going to have to see it in the connection of love of neighbor and it does love of God. And I'm going to talk about, therefore, the greatest commandment. And the second one says, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, love your neighbor as yourself doesn't mean to be selfless. It means to love your neighbor as yourself. That is, that is, you don't love your neighbor more than yourself. Neither do you love your neighbor less than yourself. And of course, what you will wish for your neighbor is connected to what you wish for yourself. And that is fear. And we know, of course, that that is found in the great commandment, not the great, in the, the golden rule. And in the golden rule, it says, do unto others as you will have them do to you. And therefore, if you don't like yourself, if you don't like yourself, but it's very difficult for you, therefore, to give a positive thing to someone else. So you have to love yourself. You have to love yourself as a relation to someone else. So don't love them any more, or don't love to love them any less. That is essentially what Jesus is trying to help us to understand, and how therefore we relate to one another. If you wish to have, see someone that you see in difficulty, in a challenge, and therefore he asks the question, who is my neighbor? And therefore he gives the story of the Good Samaritan. If you are set upon by thieves, and left half the dead. Would you want someone to come and assist you? Well, what you will want for yourself, then of course you will wish for someone else. And again, that is fair. But you have to have some kind of love for yourself. You have to have love for yourself, so therefore you can reach out and do something which another person would wish that would be good for them. So we can say, you know me, I love myself. But this particular about loving your neighbor as yourself is part of another commandment. In fact, that is the second part of the commandment. The first is that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Loving God. Because I think that when we think about 
why it is that we can love ourselves. There are many things that cause us maybe to love ourselves. We may love ourselves because we may be attractive. We may love ourselves because we are powerful. We may love ourselves because we have intellectual capabilities. We may love ourselves for a number of things, and on the face of it, that is fine. That is fine. But we do know, of course, that as human beings, because we are mortal, we have all of those things only for a time. We may be attractive, we may be beautiful, but sometimes we're only attractive and beautiful for a time. We may be powerful and strong, but it's only for a time. We may have even money, and therefore it only may be for a time. And therefore, if we put our hopes and our strength and our, all of our hopes and dreams on those things, things that ultimately we will pass away, then of course we're putting our faith and trust in something which is temporary. The other thing to that is this, that when of course we have all these things, blessings we may call them, of being attractive, intelligent, all those sort of things, we do know sometimes that we ask ourselves, does the person who is loving me, who claims to love me, are they loving me for me? Or are they loving me because of the things that they bring? The point may be saying, do we love a cow because of the cow, or do we love a cow because it gives milk? And if therefore the cow no longer gives milk, will we continue to love the cow? And that's why I remember in the conversation, in the counseling situation, where a man said to his partner, I love you. You know I love you, said, and the woman responded, I, I think you love how I make you feel. You don't love me. You love how I make you feel. And that caused him to stop and to think. Do we love others based upon ourselves? And of course, sometimes when we can say that honestly, in terms of our family and friends, and that's why, of course, it is a real difficult thing when those persons are taken away from us. But the general question remains, the general question remains, are we loved in of ourselves or are we loved like a cow because we bring milk or we bring something to the relationship? And that's why as part of the gospel, we emphasize not only to love neighbor, which is the second commandment, but to love God. And to love God with all our heart, soul, and strength of mind. Because you know what? Whether we have intellect, power, money, family, friends, whatever. God will love us with those things and God continues to love us if we don't have those things. In fact, God has shown us in the gospel that when we show the worst side of ourselves, that he still loves us. He's still prepared to love and forgive us. And that's why therefore on the cross, when humanity, with all of its sin, and spite, even though they receive feedings and healings and support and compassion from a loving Jesus, that when they were on the cross, shouting at him, cursing him, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's called God's unconditional love. And because it's unconditional love, therefore, hopefully, if we think about who truly, truly loves us, and will always be there for us, because, of course, death will separate us, sometimes from a loved one. We may have a very good relationship with a spouse, a brother, a friend, whatever. But of course, we are parted by death. But there's someone in Jesus Christ, and this is the gospel, that will love us not only in terms of our weakness and in our sin, but nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's why, as we enter into this church this afternoon, we heard the words from Romans, where it says, Paul says, I am sure, I'm convinced, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all the creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And this therefore helps us to guide us in our love for others, and our love for ourselves. We are supremely valued in God. And therefore, let us respond to that love by committing ourselves not only to family and friends, 
Not only to mourn our loss as a deep friend and a deep loved one, but to commit ourselves to the one who loved our loved one even more than we could ever love him. And commit ourselves not only to loving and being loved by him, but seeking to take seriously every day of our lives the two great commandments. To love God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. And to love our neighbor as ourself. You see me? I love myself. You see me? I love God. Amen. I'll stand. And if it is our faith, recite the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 5 of the booklet. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven. Be seated as we bow our heads in prayer. We, pray, we mourn, we pray for those who mourn for Ronnie McDonald, the office. We commemorate the departed. Let us pray with confidence to God, our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. And grant, Lord, your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy. Be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy. May we strengthen in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Show your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. We command all people to your unfailing love, and then your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice in the faithful witness of your saints in every age. Pray and share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Father of all, we pray to you, Ronnie McDonald, Philpus, for those whom we love, but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest, and light perpetual shine upon them. May he and all the faithful depart through the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. We stand now singing the final hymn for this part of the service before we go to the grave side for the committal with the hymn and can it be.
Christ is risen from the dead. Dropping down death by death and giving life to those who are in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen. Giving light to those who sat in darkness in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet in the way of peace. Having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name. Saying, come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming may the martyr receive you. And bring the holy city, Jerusalem.
You're putting on um, roses? Go ahead. You know, you got keys. You got, you got keys. Um, space it, right? Good. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me, and I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to all mortal bodies who is in dwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy in your right hand of pleasures forevermore. Insurance of the hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to our almighty God, our brother, Ronnie MacDonald Cleopas, who will commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ash to ashes, dust to dust. I beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. That when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother Ronnie and we ourselves, we found that set of your sight. Grant us for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment in bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Flowers. Yeah. What do you put in the after? Mm. Okay. Stick. Stick. Yeah.
The hymns, love lifted me, it is well with my soul, how great thou art, and can it be. As a matter of fact, abide with me. See, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. So deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me now safe. Your love 
Bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Amen.
Lord bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace Lord bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you Yeah. 